Hey everybody, Brad here from Autodemic. Here we're going to install the XSR 900 7 inch headlight conversion. What this is going to do is allow us to put a larger headlight on the front of the bike, have a lot more output, and have a lot safer ride at night. Let's see what parts come in the kit and what tools we need for the job. So the conversion includes a headlight bucket. For this install, we're doing an adaptive LED headlight, headlight side brackets, the fork rings to mount the side brackets, all of the hardware necessary, and for the tools needed, a four and five millimeter hex tool, both are included in the kit, a 10 millimeter wrench, cutters, 10 millimeter socket and ratchet, a Phillips screwdriver, and then for this installation, we're also gonna do the Motodemic gauge relocation kit and Moto Gadget and Blaze Pen turn signals, which require a 13 millimeter wrench. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get the headlight off and make way for the new headlight. To do so, we need to use a four millimeter hex tool and remove the two bolts holding in the headlight retainer ring. Now we can simply pull the headlight forward, unplug it, and set it aside. Pro tip, place a towel on your front fender to avoid it from getting scratched. Now we're gonna take our 10 millimeter wrench and five millimeter hex tool and remove the bolts securing the sides of the headlight bucket. Now we need to separate all of the wiring and the bucket. To do so, we're gonna take our Phillips screwdriver and press in the center of this plastic retaining clip. That'll free up the support. And we're going to slowly work all of the connections off of the support, unplug them and remove the bucket from the wiring. With the support free, now we unplug all of the connections. And now the bucket is free to slowly guide all of the connections and harness out. What a mess. Now using the four millimeter hex tool, remove the bolt securing the bracket holding the brake line to the headlight support. Then remove the bracket and set aside. Next we need to free the wiring harness from the headlight support bracket as well. With both of those removed, now we have access to the 10 millimeter bolt. Remove both 10 millimeter bolts with the 10 millimeter ratchet. Then remove the clip securing the horn lines. Now using the Phillips screwdriver, remove the clips securing each side of the ignition cover. With those clips removed, now using the five millimeter hex tool, we can remove the bolt in the center, securing the ignition cover and set aside. Then with the five millimeter hex tool, remove the side bracket from the right side of the bike. Now to remove the headlight support bracket, we need to remove the two remaining bolts, securing it with the five millimeter hex tool With those bolts removed, we can gently remove the headlight support bracket, being extra careful to not scratch anything or damage the forks, trying to get it out. If you are installing the gauge relocation kit, now is the perfect time to do so. Using a four millimeter hex tool, remove the three screws from the back of the gauge. 
You want to remove the washer from the screw when you're doing this. Remove the gauge from the stock bracket. Pull the rubber boot back. Unplug it. Good time to remove the rubber bushing. And now you can remove the bracket with the five millimeter hex tool. Now we'll install our gauge support using the stock bolt and bolt cover and using the shims provided in the gauge relocation kit for when installing it without the stock headlight support bracket. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this loose for now until we've installed our gauge. Then we'll install the rubber bushing into the gauge bracket, making sure that all of the lines are perpendicular to each other and that everything is nice and evenly installed. Since we're mounting this with the headlight conversion, we're gonna go ahead and put the gauge bracket on the low side of the gauge support, installing both screws using the four millimeter hex tool. Then we can reinstall the gauge by plugging it back in, sliding it into the gauge bracket, and then adjusting the wiring harness so there aren't any tight kinks or bends. Now we can install the lower spacer and bolt and tighten all of the mounting points down with the five millimeter hex tool. And finally, we can install the gauge cover using the four millimeter hex tool and the bolts we removed. For more detailed installation on the gauge relocation kit, check out our other video that's linked in the description. Now we'll reinstall the horn, reusing the bolt removed from the headlight support bracket and the 10 millimeter ratchet. Now is a perfect time to zip tie the brake line, the wiring harness, and the horn line together. It's a good idea to put it in line with this steering stop on the front of the frame. It's up to you if you wanna remove these wiring clip holders uh, with your cutters. We're gonna go ahead and leave those in case we ever wanna put the stock headlight back on. So using the supplied zip tie, we're going around the grommet on the brake line, the wiring harness, and the horn line. This doesn't need to be super tight, just snug, so that there is a potential for some play in the lines, but really everything moves as one on the steering, so it shouldn't be a problem. Trim the excess and make sure there's no binding. Okay, so before we get started installing the headlight brackets onto the forks, I wanna cover how the fork rings work. It's a two-piece design. You have a male and a female portion. They simply slide together and clamp to the fork tube. You'll notice that the kit comes with two of these shims, and these are go on the smaller of the fork rings for the upper mount because the fork tube on the XSR900 is tapered. So these give a much better grab on that tapered surface. Okay, so to install the fork ring, we're gonna take our rubber shim, wrap it around, do the same thing with the fork ring, get it about level and even, Take our second fork ring, slide it on. Now take the 
provided button head socket cap screw and our four millimeter Allen. We're just gonna lightly set it in place. We're not even tightening the bolt. We want this ring to be able to move almost freely. Now we're gonna take our side bracket and another one of the bolts and lightly install it into the top fork ring. Then we're gonna take our bottom male half of the fork ring. And this is gonna show us exactly where we need to put the bottom ring for now. Go ahead and loosely install that. Now we can take the bottom female fork ring, slide it on from the back and loosely install the last screw. Repeat this on the other side. Now is a perfect time to install your aftermarket turn signals. Now we can take all of this wiring and begin feeding it into the headlight bucket. We wanna do so in an organized manner so it's not just a jumbled mess inside the bucket but we just really wanna get everything inside first and then we can organize it once the bucket's in place. Once you've fed enough of the wiring into the bucket, you should be able to place one of the headlight side bolts in, do some more adjusting now you might need to adjust the side brackets a little bit to get them a little lower. Come over on the other side. And basically what we're trying to do is just make sure that none of the wiring behind the bucket is interfering with anything else and isn't being pinched against anything on the frame or anything like that. Once we can get the other headlight bolt started, it gives us a good idea where the headlight's gonna sit and we're just gonna move the whole harness around until everything kind of sits where it wants to sit. And again, there's, we don't want any, anything binding or kinking on the backside. Now we can start the process of plugging everything back in. The good thing is everything's color coded. So we'll leave our headlight connector loose then start putting everything back. We can still follow the circular pattern that was in the stock bucket. And what you want to do is use the built-in straps that are inside the bucket to hold all of the wiring back against the back of the housing leaving just your headlight connection right in the middle. So now that the bucket's fitted and in a rough area of adjustment, we can go ahead and just tighten up the headlight side bolts temporarily until we get the headlight in. And what this is gonna do is just kind of square everything up with the side brackets the fork rings, try to help everything be level. Make sure everything's straight. Make sure your fork rings and your shims all match up well. This one needs a little bit of adjustment, so I'm just gonna loosen it, adjust the shim. Now you can tighten everything up. It doesn't need to be too tight. We're talking only eight foot pounds at the most here. And one thing you might choose to do is once everything is set up and kind of in place, you can remove one screw at a time, apply blue Loctite and put it back in. Now you just want to double check that there's no binding in any of the wiring going full lock to lock. We actually act, had to adjust our, where our zip tie was located in order to keep the wiring loom away from the steering stop that's located underneath the headlight bucket. And now there's absolutely no clearance issues or binding of the wiring on that steering stop. Now we're ready to install the headlight. 
plug in the H4 connection. Start by putting the top of the retaining ring on the headlight bucket right here. Then you want to look at the light right here where the hole for the screw goes and line up the threads before pressing the retaining ring into the bucket. And finally, install the retaining ring side screws on both sides of the headlight. Adjusting the light is easy. Simply use the five millimeter hex tool and loosen the side bolts. Adjust your light as needed and tighten them back down. All right, now we need to test the light. Go ahead and turn the bike on. Let it start for a second. Test your high beam and your pass functions and you're all set. And there you have it, the Motodemic XSR900 seven inch headlight conversion. For more details, head to motodemic.com. Be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.